You ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Just count me down. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Healthy Cooking with Shada. I'm your host, and this is where we have a special show for you guys tonight. As you all know, Erin and I have been on vacation in Alaska, and oh my God, what a wonderful vacation it was. And today, we are going to talk about traveling on a plant-based diet, SOS free lifestyle, and how you can do it and have a wonderful time. It's just amazing. Honestly, um, one of the best part was not having to worry about the food. And the other amazing thing was traveling with like-minded people. It's so nice when you get a group of people that eat the same way, think the same way, and we all, you know, you got to meet everyone. It was just such a nice bonding time and we had a wonderful group. So, and our travel went on, um, we traveled on the Windstar Breeze and they, boy, oh boy, did they really take care of us. And this cruise ship is much smaller than the other cruises that I've traveled on, but I absolutely loved it. And I would highly, highly recommend it. The, 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 the caring that we got was unbelievable. The hospitality that we got, I mean, every one of them was just absolutely wonderful. So, and to, Aaron, you had a wonderful time, right? Yeah, it so, was, it was really... <laughs> I mean, I can't say enough about our trip. It was just, I get so excited talking about it. Um, so today we have two very special guests with us. First, we have my dear friend and travel agent, Lisa McCarl. And if you want to go on a vacation and really have a good time, then you must travel with her. I mean, she knows all the ends and spots and she can arrange everything and take care of everything and you don't have to worry about it. And this, this girl does everything. And also joining us tonight is my dear friend, Wanda Huberman. She is the executive director for NHA, the National Health Association, which you guys have heard me talk about. And they also put out a wonderful publication called Health Science Magazine, which I'm telling you, if you guys haven't subscribed to it, what are you waiting for? You need to subscribe. It is an absolutely fantastic magazine. And they have wonderful articles in there. They interview wonderful people. So I think it truly is a must have for every, every home. So ladies, welcome to our show. Thank you, Shayna. Well, Thank you so much. Um, so we're going to start, you know, the reason that we have them here today is because they have so many more trips coming up uh, that are whole food plant based. And I know a lot of you guys saw me posting a lot of pictures on Instagram and on Facebook, and you had many, many questions. So I'm hoping that, you know, you guys will ask your questions, feel free, just make sure that you start out with like three questions and then ask your question and then end it with three questions because the questions go through really quick and poor Aaron has to keep up with all the questions. So this way, if I ask Aaron, you know, if do we have any questions, she can um, just let us know. Before we get started, I'd like to show, uh, can you show the picture of our ship? Yeah. Um, because I, everybody's asking me like, how small is this ship? And you ladies can, can comment on this. I mean, we look like a toy next to the Norwegian cruise line, did we not? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we really did. I mean, but I, I'm telling you, I, I preferred it much more. Did you, did you, were you able to get the picture? Yeah. Because I'd like people to see, because they're always asking me, well, like, how big was the ship? And I'm like, well, you know, I think, Lisa, how many people did we have? 300, I mean, the ship holds what, 330? The, the ship holds 312. We had about 230 cruising okay. and 100 staff. Okay, so... Compared to the other ships that I've traveled on, where they had anywhere from 4,500 to 5,000 guests alone, yeah. and God only knows how many um, crew members they had, then and it was just a lot more. I mean, look at our ship. Our ship is absolutely gorgeous, if I do say so myself, even though it's not my ship. But <laughs> <laughs> we wish it was our ship. We wish, <laughs> we wish it was our ship. Um, so, Lisa, tell us how did you get into the plant based traveling? Um, as you were an open heart surgery recovery nurse. I was, I was. And, um, oh, what a fun picture. Right, uh, I wanted to show some pictures of the ship. Okay, uh, well, I uh, 
enjoyed nursing and then I worked as a director of quality assurance. And then I had an opportunity to be home with three children for a while. And when I told my husband it was time to go back to work and I was ready to go back to hospital administration, he asked me to choose something that would be fewer hours. And he said that he really wanted to travel and be able to be on the same schedule. So I started my certification courses more than 20 years ago. And I was a regular travel agent for 10 years. And then when we went plant-based, uh, we went on several other plant-based cruises. And I actually said, wow, I'll never do plant-based cruises. You can't make everybody happy. You could never make anybody happy. And so uh, that was my impression. And then I went to an NHA conference and saw how beautifully Wanda prepared the food that really pleases almost any, you know, uh, any of the various followers, people who don't eat nuts or people who don't um, or who enjoy potatoes. It was all there so that you could take what you wanted. And I went up to Wanda and she had never met me before. And I said, well, if, if you can do this on a ship, I will help you <laughs> with plant based travel. Oh, that's wonderful, because my follow-up question to you was, how did your partnership with NHA begin? I was at True North, and I saw health science. And so I joined, and it took us about a year to get to a conference just because of scheduling, but we've always enjoyed all of the plant-based conferences. And so uh, we went to the NHA conference. It was fabulous. Oh, yeah, and wonderful, and Wanda's wonderful. Wanda, can you please tell us a little bit about NHA and what led you to start putting together these wonderful plant-based trips? Sure. So the NHA has been around since 1948. We're so excited to be celebrating our 75th anniversary this year and um, just about ready to sign the contract. So it will be at the Holiday Inn in Independence from oh, June 23rd to June 25th, but we're gonna plan even more extra special things. So come in on Thursday, the 22nd, make sure you don't miss the hiking at the national park with the park rangers and it's gonna be a great time. I'll be getting information out. If you're not a member, you can keep um, a watch on our webpage. Shade will be talking about it. It'll be in the magazine. Uh, we already, we had a hundred people sign up last year to come. They didn't know where it was going to be, when it was going to be, who was speaking, but they said they were coming. So the hotel will sell out at 350. So I'm pretty sure I'm kind of optimistic we'll be sold out by January. Well, possible. I'm definitely going this year. So don't, mm -hmm. don't give my ticket to anybody. I'm super excited about it, right. especially yeah. having it the 75th. So I'm, right. I'm totally excited about that. Um, so I did, like Lisa said, we met at the conference, I think maybe in 2019. 2018. 2018. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, if you can talk to one chef, you can talk to another chef. And Windstar was just, Lisa was great to work with. Windstar is like working with Disney. I, I couldn't ask for anything more. And the consistency over the years we've been working with them, it's just they really want to please us. They really want to get it right. And, you know, unlike other places I go, the chefs will let you take them so far. And then it's like, okay, you've just got to be done. You can't push any further. And that's how I was with Windstar. We, they were so good that I was talking about such minutia. I'm like, okay, I'm done. But they're coming up to me like, no, no, what else? What else? What else? So they kept learning. They kept accepting more and more suggestions. And I think um, the food started out fantastic and I couldn't even believe it got even better yeah. as oh, okay. the cruise went on. And we're gonna show some of the food photos. Um, and I think you two have created a beautiful friendship and you definitely have created something absolutely amazing by partnering up together because you guys are both wonderful. Um, Thank you. Do you do you invite any speakers on these on these cruises or maybe down the road you might invite speakers or are you keeping it like strictly vacation mode? So we've talked about that before and Lisa you can jump in if this isn't 
if you see it differently. But right now we have not had any speakers, although when we went to Baja, we had a little, we participated in a cooking demo. So it kind of depends on what they have scheduled. And we're not adverse if we have C days and they have space available and, and we have a doctor on board that wants to speak, we could do that. But this really is geared to just be an adventure, not even just a cruise. It's an adventure where you can be as active as you want to be and really connect like you enjoy doing Shada and enjoy the food. There wasn't any time for lectures. We no, were so busy. It, it, and, and to be honest with you, I didn't miss not going to lectures. I really enjoyed just being able to travel and enjoy my time and get to know people and just really enjoy it. Whereas on those ships that you do have lectures, you, you don't know whether to go to this lecture or that lecture or, you, you know, it's, no, I, I actually like the format that you guys have. Thank so, you. I, was just intri- I was just intrigued. Um, now, are you guys going to do mostly like cruises or have you ever thought about also doing land, land travel? I'm so going to let you answer that. that. <laughs> <laughs> just cruises. <laughs> okay. okay. That, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I thought I'd ask. It's um, difficult to train or it's difficult to help get several chefs on board and, but once you do, they prepare every meal on a cruise. Whereas on a land tour, you have different meals three times a day. So, and I will say that uh, in terms of a speaker, you and Kathy Fisher and, and uh, Nutmeg Notebook, Tammy Kramer did a fabulous Q and A and people you. who were not part of our group enjoyed attending to Thank learn you. about plant-based eating. So yeah. that was, a fun impromptu gathering. That that was nice. Um, let's talk a little bit about our trip uh, to Alaska. So I'm sure a lot of preparation went into this. Can you, whoever wants to talk, can you guys tell us what types of preparations had to go into planning this wonderful trip? I started in 2019 when I went on a Windstar cruise to the Panama Canal. And uh, I had already discussed with Windstar Management the way that we eat and that I had groups interested in traveling. And uh, I went on a ship to see what they could do. And uh, they did a fabulous job. And because we had a very small group, there were only four of us who were plant-based on that trip. Um, That was mostly family style. But they did a fabulous job and they got it. So I said, I think I can bring 40 people back. Um, so when Wanda asked me to, to pick a date for Alaska and start booking, we sold out within two weeks. And then oh, wow. they increased our numbers and we sold out again. So there was just such demand. Oh, that's wonderful. And I know Wanda talked about this a little bit, that you worked with the chefs. What I want to know is how receptive were they? And did you have to explain to them the volume of food that we typically eat, especially when it comes to salads and vegetables? Yes, we did talk about that. We, it was great that not only were we talking to the executive leadership team, but we were talking directly to chefs. And um, that's the only way I will plan an event in the future because it's hard enough for us to relay that, to expect us to talk to management and them to talk to it is an unreasonable expectation. And so we just tell them, you know, that you really, I I put it in things they can understand by saying two pounds of salad a day, or just plan to triple, you know, what you would normally serve in, in a salad for produce, not necessarily our cooked food or the desserts, but for the produce, just figure what people might eat in your typical restaurant for a salad plan that our people will eat three times that much. And they took it very seriously. I said, buy big bowl. (laughs) You know, I said, you have two choices. You either buy really big bowls or you hire enough staff to continue refilling the bowls. And so they had lovely service wear and two-sided. And I think um, even with the hundred people we had on board, we got through the lines. I don't ever feel like I was standing in line. It, it we just, were never in line. No. 
No, there was no, I, I, I didn't, I mean, Aaron, did you see, I, I didn't see any lines at all. No. No, there was, there was no lines. Um, did you give them recipes to follow or were they excited by your guidelines to create something special for our group? Because I'm telling you, the food was really good. It was both. Um, we worked a lot with the food and beverage manager, Peter, right? Lisa, that's his name, Peter, yes. isn't it? Yes. And he actually joined the National Health Association. And he, I talked to him about non-alcoholic beverages by using Dr. Furman vinegars. They bought Dr. Furman vinegars. And wow, that's they, wonderful. They were reading the recipes that I served at our conferences. And so I can't tell you that they took a specific recipe. I know they use some, but it was their discretion to use and alter as they saw fit as long as they worked with our guidelines and they were wonderful. We had many, many conversations where if they just had a question, they called, we talked about it. They understood label reading and, and that we were just very fortunate to have chefs that understood. Aaron and they is showing, it. They worked and, at it. They, yeah. Well, they did a, they did a great job. And Erin is showing right now, um, our salad, our salads that we had on lunchtime and the amounts that they had, and then go to the next photo. And then here we're showing all the toppings and everything that we have for so that us. Was just the toppings for that, the salad. Yeah, that was just the <laughs> toppings for the salads. It's just unbelievable. A lot of, a lot of collection. Um, do you want to go to the next slide? This is uh, every day they had, or at every meal, they had different soups for us. And I'll let Erin talk about the soups because she was like the soup queen. This was my favorite station. <laughs> The whole time, all I wanted to eat was soup because it was a little colder there yeah. compared to here. So yeah, the soups were my favorite. All, every single soup was incredible. And my favorite station is coming up, I think. <laughs> we, got the, we got the dessert kind of behind it, the fruit. And stuff. No, my, my favorite station was always the fruit. So well, I mean, the if, fruit was, if so. I could be a fruitarian, honest to God, I would be a fruitarian. So well, and the neat, we don't have a picture of it, but the neat thing I thought I love grapefruit. And at breakfast every morning, they had pre, they had pre-cut grapefruit and it was sliced thin and it oh, was nice. peeled. And nice. it was, it was nice. a treat because killing a grapefruit and doing that takes some time. It does take some time. And one of the things I was worried about is, you know, we were on that ship for 10 days and they do shop at some ports, but having quality produce is not easy for no, yeah, no. people. They never missed the mark. I mean, no, the, they did they, not. everything they did was just right. They always had really delicious berries. Oh yeah, the berry, everything. Like I said, like pineapple. I had I had pineapple probably three times a day. <laughs> Serious. So this was one of the desserts that we had. They always had a little dessert at each meal. And then the, here's some of the main courses that they had. And I don't and remember. These are your, oh, so here's the, the fruit and the chocolate. So, so here I, I am showing the, a picture of a plate uh, full of fruit. And um, they had a chocolate sauce that you could put on top of the fruit. And it turns out they made it with almond milk, like chocolate almond milk. There was no, I asked that there was no agave, there was no sweetener, no date, no nothing in there. And it was really good. And it was really good. On strawberries and raspberries, that was my favorite. Did you guys try it? Yeah, I thought it was fantastic. And you might as well talk about the chocolate bar they had for the rest of the ship. And I think do we have, do we have a picture of the chocolate bar? Uh, I don't know if we do. Well, the interesting thing about the chocolate sauce is I walked up to our chef who was talking to two of our members and they said, what you really need on our dessert bar is chocolate sauce. And oh, they wanted him happened. how to make SOS free plant-based chocolate sauce. And oh. I Wanda, were you there for that conversation? I don't remember Lisa. Okay, well, it was, I, I distinctly remember two of our members who were talking about chocolate sauce and the next day there it was. <laughs> and how <laughs> lovely, how favorite. lovely it was because it was really good. Yeah, that was, it was good. And when they, they wrote on the schedule that they were having this chocolate bar evening reception party, oh, I wasn't yeah. even going to go. I'm like, well, that's, and then I just thought, oh, I'll wander down. And they had a whole section. 
all for us. And and I the chef was there and the ho- the hotel general manager was just fantastic. And he was yes, kind yes. of our go-to person. So everybody got consistent messages. And he's like, of course, you're half the ship. We're not going to have any activity where you're not participating. And that yeah. that was really nice. That because I I was a Maritza and I we weren't sure whether we would go or not. And I'm glad that we went because, like you said, Wanda, they had they had exactly what we needed for ourselves too. And I brought some back for Erin because she was back in the room, so right. she had the fruit <laughs> on the skewers with uh, the chocolate room. sauce. Yeah, this is our room service. Oh yeah, so I'm po- posting a picture of the room service, and I want to know: Did you guys tell them to make a um, a special menu for room service for us? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's great. And at the on the previous cruise, the Baja cruise, we rotated few through a few. Uh, entrees and then we said here are our favorites put these on right. okay we tried the um the mushroom quesadillas were to die for those yeah, were was so good. really good and the falafel was well i'm middle eastern so i'm going to be a little more critical of falafels right but um they still did a fabulous job wonderful job so thank you for having a special and then on our last night it was really funny Aaron and I both had a craving for grapes. So, <laughs> so we called room service and we said, can we get some grapes, please? Believe it or not, they brought us two large plates full of red grapes. <laughs> it was so good. And I don't know if you knew, Shada, that like if you just were tired from all the excursions of the day and didn't want to go to dinner, you weren't, we weren't even limited to the room service menu. If you called for room service during a meal time, you could just say, what's on the menu today? And they would, and you could just say, oh, I'd like this, this, and this. Oh, and I you could it. say, I want a little bit of everything. And they would just bring it to your room. It was crazy that, service. That I didn't know. So the next pictures that we're showing were some of the meals that I put together on my plate. And we can probably just go through those. There's, they're just, oh, these shots. Okay, we're going to talk about these shots because I think, Wanda, did you train them or give them a smoothie class? <laughs> uh, because I'm telling you, in the mornings when you went upstairs, they had these, the smoothies were delicious. This was a beet, broccoli, and celery shot that I, and I think I overdid it because I had way too many of those because that was my favorite. <laughs> but did you give them a class or did you teach them? Because I know you do a lot of smoothies on how to make them. Right. The, yeah, they asked me, I, I the first day they were good, but not great. And I said, if you want, I can just show you how I make smoothies. And so we set a time and I went up and the three top chefs on board showed up and had their camera ready and all their smoothie stuff. And they had some things I needed and some of, that I wanted. And I just said, do you have this? And they'd send somebody down to the kitchen, they grab it and we made smoothies and had a great time just tasting the smoothies together. And then they started serving them. Um, I think they they have, do have a picture. Yeah, we have a picture. So we're trying to pull Oh, it. yes. Oh, how fun. That so is the back, the back story shade okay. is on the Baja cruise. I was getting up at like 6.30 every morning and making smoothies for the ship every day. Oh, wow. Oh. And so they told me, you can come and make the smoothies. And I'm like, eh, I don't think so. There's too many. How about if we have a lesson and I show your people how to make it? And then they had a wonderful smoothie station at whatever re- restaurant we went to. And you could even get like those, those um, juices were so good I ordered one for room service and said I want it in a smoothie glass but this station right there was amazing where every day a different smoothie a different juice yeah that was, so uh, thank you so much for doing that for us because it really was absolutely delicious so I'll get back to the food so let's go back to the food there's more, more yeah so here these these shots were really good though Everybody was asking me, really healthy food on a cruise ship? The two don't equate. And I said, well, on our ship, it does equate. And we did it. We did it. Yeah. So. And then these are some more of your meals. So some more of our meals with um, the soup with Aaron's favorite. Which I don't <laughs> well, know. They, did they not do burritos in an amazing way? The yeah, enchiladas the and the Mexican food they did was phenomenal. Yeah. They did. And the, well. My favorite to this day is still the tandoori that he made. I, I still, yes. I still, I'm like, oh my God, that was so good. Um, Have you made that yet? I haven't made it yet. 
But I will. I need to. Yeah. I will. This was another event. They had um, drinks up on the on the fifth deck or sixth deck. Yeah, and so I it was a cocktail hour. So I thought kind of what you guys were saying earlier that we wouldn't be included in it, but they had all kinds of special drinks for us. Yeah, they did. They did a they even non alcoholic drinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there any more food pictures or is that it? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about like what activities were you guys, did you guys plan on our trip? I mean, I know what we planned, but maybe for our viewers, because um, there are a few people had asked me what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of activities do we guys have on the ship? Because when you go on those big, massive ships, they have activities from morning till night. And our, ours was just a little bit, well, it was on a much smaller scale. Yes, we had entertainment. There were three groups. Uh, there was entertainment director who sang a wide range from opera to Broadway to pop. Um, he was fabulous. Oh, and he was wonderful. Yes, yes PJ. PJ. And uh, then we had two additional ensembles. So there was musical entertainment starting in the afternoons and continuing. Um, there's certainly the fitness room. And there were pools, and uh, there's the what they call the yacht club, where you can do puzzles, play cards. There was always people in there playing games. You can go to the bridge. The bridge is open, so you can see how the ship is navigated. So they had talks. They had an expedition team, and they were local Alaskans who had uh, studied the history, culture. Um, all the botanicals and then the sea life and the uh, the birds, the ornithologists. So uh, we did have talks during the day about um, Alaska and the, the wildlife we would see and um, how the glaciers were formed and how they're calving. And uh, the, it goes on and then there's of course the excursions and it's a small ship. So it has a water sports platform. So there's Zodiacs and kayaks. And so we got to go kayaking in remote areas in the Misty Fjords and the Kenai Fjords and uh, Endicott Arm where we were the only people in sight. Which was really, really nice. So what, what was the main, re and I know what, I don't know. What was the main reason that you guys went with a smaller ship, like the Windstar? Um, did you have opportunities to perhaps go on a larger ship, but then after doing your own investigation, you decided, no, you know what, I think I like the smaller, more intimate ship. Was there, did you guys ever contemplate going on a bigger ship? Uh, with, with years of cruising experience, I strongly prefer smaller ships. It's, there's no lines, it's, it's a different level of service. And the Windstar ships, the motor yachts have recently been refurbished. And one of my favorite things is that even the entry level rooms are 265 or 270 square feet. So you could be in a porthole suite at the entry level price and still have a very nice room. And, and I couldn't agree with you more, the rooms were, yeah. unbelievable they were extremely spacious I and I have traveled extensively all my life and I've been on several cruise ships and this was by far one of the nicest yeah. cruise ships that I've been Very on nice. and I've never been on a cruise ship that had two sinks in the bathroom yeah. or do they or did it have the kind of sitting area that we had on this ship yes. uh, we and, even saw whales from our room. Yeah, we could see whales from our room. We could see waterfalls from our room. It was just unbelievable. And I don't know about anybody else, but for me, the smaller ship is the way to go. And that's probably, I'll never probably go back on a, on a larger, larger ship. Well, it really feels like it's your own private boat because there's not a lot of people on it. Well, and all the staff get to know you. It's yeah. just amazing how they re memorize names within a day or two. Yeah, that, um, and then your food preferences or your beverage preferences. So it's really quite nice. And it's, it was wonderful. And Shada, I kept this at my desk. So every day in our room was this, and it's called the daily program. 
And so it would just say the various activities and what time. And on the back side, it would say where the NHA meals were served and what time and what restaurants to go to. I thought these were great. Just in those easy were, way. Those were, yeah, those were fantastic. Does the WinStar allow for small children or is there an age limit when it comes to the WinStar? Six is the minimum age. And I will say about the paper copy, uh, they have, they're transitioning over to an app on board. And so uh, because our group had different dining times and the schedule could be a little bit confusing if you didn't have a constant reminder, uh, they did allow us to have the paper, but they are striving for more and more sustainability. So they have an app that has all of that information as well that doesn't require you to be online. Yeah. So it was, it was on our TV yeah. in our room. It was on our TV. Yes. And also phones. phones. Yeah. yeah, I took a picture and then I would just glance at the picture throughout the day. No, it, it was wonderful. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the different excursions that we went on. I want to know from, and we're going to show some pictures, but I want to know from each of you guys, what were some of your favorite excursions? Because like for me, I loved going out and seeing the glaciers, especially when they were calving, and then also the whale washing. Like I thought, oh my God, just to see those whales was, was just breathtaking. So what did you guys, what were some of your favorite um, excursions that you went on. Well, All right, I'll go first. I'll go first. So the one that I wasn't going to do because I sometimes have motion sickness, but I just couldn't resist and it worked out fine is I took a helicopter to the top of Mendenhall Glacier and we landed on the glacier and had a chance to walk around and had um, an expert from Alaska there telling us all about the glacier formation and they give you special shoes to walk on the glacier and the whole thing from getting on the helicopter to walking on the glacier was just something I'll never forget. It was extraordinary. I saw some of your pictures, one that you showed me, and I'm like, oh my God, I wish I had gone, but I do have slightly a fear of heights. <laughs> so I didn't know how I would do. But yeah. um, after seeing your pictures, oh my God, I really, I'm like, shoot, I should have gone. Next time. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Exactly. Exactly. Lisa, how about you? Oh, I loved kayaking around the glaciers. Uh, so Clayton and I went out kayaking and we were with a whole big group from NHA. Well, not that big, but maybe uh, maybe six kayaks. And uh, it was very fun. And I also enjoyed the Zodiac, but I loved hiking too. We had a fabulous hike one day, it was just great. Yeah, the hiking was great. Well, can, let's show some pictures of our excursions and some of the things that we saw. Um, that were just so what have you got Aaron so that's one of the glaciers one of the glaciers that you're seeing right now I mean seriously I don't think pictures do it justice they are really no. so beautiful and you heard that the next week they saw the the aurora borealis no they did not like they the did. day after oh, I the, left oh, are wow. you kidding me <sighs> Yeah. It was, uh, the pictures are phenomenal, but there's a beautiful shot of a whale. That's amazing. And I don't know, Wanda, is that the picture you took or if that's the picture that Maritza took? So we had some people give us like really good whale shots as well. Yeah, I, yes. that's very similar to what I took. I don't know if it was my I, I don't. I don't know whose picture is who, but I know yeah. that I didn't take it because the ones I took, they barely had their, or I barely caught them in time. Yeah. So. This was one of the hiking trails that we went on, and it was and also Sitka. what was it? And Sitka. Yeah, and Sitka. Sitka, that, was, Sitka had that great. Was a really pretty. It was a really pretty trail. And what was really, and I'm sure you guys can, um, you saw these, but they had mushrooms. Did you see all the different wild mushrooms as you went on your hikes? I did the it green was. ones. I've never seen such color green mushrooms. I yes. Have. Yeah, I hadn't seen a lot of those. So on, on your Instagram, you have a, a post just dedicated to the mushrooms. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Because I wanted, I wanted Robin Saul to see yeah. them. Because, well, Robin loves to go out foraging and, and, uh, and finding the mushrooms and stuff. So I thought she'd get a kick out of it. Yeah. yeah. So I did. And there's our bald eagle. Uh -huh. There were so many bald eagles. It was unbelievable. A lot, yeah. So right, like, and we saw them in the wild right. also. But you see them everywhere. Like yeah, the, you do. The bald eagles were everywhere. 
and then another whale another whale because Shada <laughs> liked the whale <laughs> but yeah it's really the pictures when we take the pictures and the videos they're not they're uh, not they're not as good as when you see it in person. No, it's no. just so cool to see the whales come out. Well, yeah. we saw the humpback and we saw the gray whale that day. And yeah, then sea otters really and puffins. Yeah, porpoise. We saw and lots porpoises. of porpoises. Yeah. Uh -huh. But porpoises kept getting confused with orcas. So I remember a few times people were like, oh my goodness, orcas. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, just a porpoise. <laughs> and then the seals. Yeah, the seals were so cute. I don't think we have a picture, I don't think we have a picture of this. We, yeah. we have a really good picture of the seal. But I posted them all over Facebook and Instagram. So this was the Endicott Glacier. And that was that was really cool to see. But the blue, the colors are just magnificent. And you can barely, you can see how close these that you get when you're in the Zodiac. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is, and the icy water. Yeah. And that's why we put that in to show people there's Aaron and I on the Zodiac and there's just, you know, we're surrounded by ice in the water. Yeah. It was, and then it, you can't see, but in the background there, that's a seal on top of the ice. Like we can barely, see, can see, barely it. see it, but it's there. And were you surprised? It was chilly out on the water, but it wasn't nearly as cold as I thought it would be. I'm looking shady. You don't even have your gloves on. No, it wasn't that bad. I, I was, I was expecting a lot of rain and a lot of really cold weather. And mm -hmm. I was pleasantly surprised that the weather really cooperated for us. It really right. did. So that's when we went whale watching. That's when we went whale watching. And it was funny because right when I took this picture of Shada, a whale came out right behind her. And I wished oh. so bad that I could oh, have that picture. That would have been so I was cool. like, oh, there's a whale. <laughs> that would have been so cool. Uh, and the mountains all around it. Was yeah, cool. the mountains are gorgeous. So that's the iceberg yep. at the Endicott Glacier. Yeah. Look how blue that is. You can't tell how big it is there, but it it was pretty, pretty massive. Pretty massive, yeah. Yeah. And then do we have anything else? I think that's the last one. That's the last one. Well, just Aaron, why don't we check with Aaron to see, do you have any questions at all from our viewers? And we'd love to tell you about our future travel. Oh, absolutely. We're going to go through all that. And I posted all of that on, I sent out an email with all those links and I posted it in the show notes. So everybody, yeah, absolutely. And we're going to talk about your future trips and things that you guys have coming up. So hopefully we have some, well, in the meantime, oh, did you find some? Oh, keep on. Oh, so, okay. So she'll, she'll interrupt me if she's got questions or anything. Oh, um. So is the vaccine required to travel? Well, uh, vaccine mandates are being dropped by the day. And so we're very hopeful that Windstar will be dropping theirs soon. And uh, at this time, um, Lindblad Expeditions just dropped their booster requirement, Yay. but they haven't dropped their vaccination requirement yet. But there are fabulous companies who have been dropping their vaccine, small ships too. So I do believe with the competitors making a move, that's going to start to happen. Right. Um, and somebody else asked about that, so I think that answers it. Um, we've got a lot of people excited saying they want to go. Well, of course, it was a <laughs> um, wonderful yeah. trip. Yeah, well, somebody had said um, that there, no one in her family um, eats this way. But the nice thing I think about this cruise is you could have a family member go with you that's not plant-based and they could eat at the other restaurant or a lot of people from that weren't plant-based were coming down and eating with us too. So. Yeah, absolutely. There's options. We had, we had a, a couple, a number, a few people in our group that were with um, a travel partner or spouse that was not plant-based and they would often just get the food from our restaurant delivered to the restaurant that was serving the other meal and they'd eat with their family and it was rather seamless and they could both get what they wanted. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so somebody wants to know for the cruise, uh, the NHA Lindball Galapagos cruise in February, is yes. it going to be pretty similar to this? So I'm guessing food. The wise. food will be more simple. Um, there it's, uh, we're still working with their chefs and their, their team. Uh, there are restrictions on some of the foods, like some of the seeds you cannot take into the Galapagos. So 
uh, Wanda and I are set to have another meeting soon with their uh, food team to see uh, how they're coming along with our menu. Um, but I would say uh, Lindblad Expedition, it is an expedition focused trip. So whereas the Windstar is very luxurious, the cabins on the Lindblad on the National Geographic um, uh, Endeavor 2 are smaller and they're more basic. And so um, it's a less for it's a it's a more casual, more expedition based cruise. So yet the team that they bring on board is remarkable. And I was reading the bio for our expedition team leader today, and she sounds fabulous. And so they will have uh, the National Geographic certified photographers working with us and doing photo tips and photo classes. And uh, we will have small groups with the ornithologists and um, the you will learn the history. It's just a wonderful, you're right up there with nature. It's just very, very close and personal. And Lisa, what are the odds that this ship will be entirely plant-based, which although the food think, might be more simple, that's going to be extraordinary. Yes, yes. And I can't imagine they're going to bring non-plant-based people at this point. I think we have six or less cabins left. So we, I even sold one a half hour ago. Oh, Yay, yeah. congratulations. Yes, so thank that's, you. Yeah, you know, so. That's going to be, it's going to mirror that community experience. They only, hold, this ship only holds 96 people. Yes. And so if you can imagine how easy it'll be to get to know everybody you're traveling with, they're all going to be NHA members for them. It appears that way. There's could mm -hmm. be a few exceptions, but if the ship's um, staff only has to prepare whole food plant-based, that just is going to be extraordinary. Yes, that's the goal. And it looks like we're, we're very, very close. Hey, we could be, we're the future. So who says that more, uh, more ships are not going to start jumping on the bandwagon of making it more plant-based that they can get more clients on their ships. Right. Uh, a lot of, a lot of ships offer vegan food, but it's the Beyond Burgers and it's the French fries and um, Windstar really has done a remarkable job offering foods, healthy plant-based uh, meals. When I was giving the smoothie demo and working with the chefs, the one chef was um, so proud to tell the other chef that he had watched Forks Over Knives and Game Changers. <laughs> and so they really made efforts to understand what we were talking about. Yes. And do you think, um, and I know I was talking to Chef, chef Raj, Ravi, Rajiv, Ravi? Rajiv. Rajiv. And I asked him, I said, Okay, well, obviously the food is delicious, what you've prepared. So do you think you'll start to incorporate for yourself and for your family more of this type of cooking and this type of foods? And he was like all over it. So I think that's wonderful that maybe we've inspired some of the staff to like really change their diet and change their lifestyle and start incorporating at least maybe, maybe not three meals a day, maybe by just doing one meal a day or then moving up to two meals a day. Well, it's planting that seed, right? Which is right. what the NHA wants to do all the time. And you just never know when that seed's going to sprout big, big time. And I think that seed will, will <laughs> that, that, that seed's going to grow. Um, both of you are very, oh, we have one more question. I'm yeah, sorry. one more, sorry. Um, um, is, is this the only ship in the fleet that is plant-based? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, Lindblad Expeditions has done previous plant-based cruises with Dr. McDougall. And so, and, and that was one of the reasons I felt comfortable. I have been on Lindblad Expeditions and loved it. The experience is just so unique and the, uh, the, the immersion in nature is just phenomenal. Um, so 
our group, they're serving plant-based meals to everyone at every meal, but they do have plant-based items on their menu, uh, not necessarily oil-free. Um, so we also have uh, two Windstar cruises planned for 2023 and 2024. We have a Greece to Israel in October of 2023, and then we have Panama Canal in 2024. And because we're going to be doing smaller groups on our Windstar cruises, they are starting to sell out. And Lisa, if I understood the question, they were asking maybe Windstar has six ships in their fleet and whatever ship we have a group going on, they will provide the food on that ship. Yes. Yes. And they, they will continue, even with smaller groups, to bring additional chef and kitchen staff on board for us. And Lisa, are you going to the Galapagos trip in February? Someone wants I to know. am. <laughs> are you going, Wanda? I wouldn't miss it. There you go. <laughs> there there you that's, go. That's, a, that's a lifetime goal. Yeah. That's a bucket list trip. I would, I would love to go to that one. Oh my God. Hey, I'm glad we got you in on this one. I know. So. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. The next, the next Galapagos, I'll, I'll try and go. Um, and then um, for people that are in Canada, um, is what is the website where they can find out more information for the cruises? I don't know if they just changed the dot .ca. No, it's the same. They come to Thanks the much. National Health Association. Okay. And then our link is under events. If you hover over, if you go to the National Health Association page, it's healthscience.org. And then at the top bar, it says events. If you hover over events, you'll see plant-based travel. Okay. And the website's healthscience.org. Yeah, right. I think I posted all of that in the, in the show, show notes. notes. But now that we've talked about it a little bit, um, so let's talk about some of the trips that you guys have coming up, because I know you've got the Galapagos in February. What's, what's coming up after that? Yes. October 20th through 28th, we'll be on a, a Windstar motor yacht, and we'll start in Athens and Greece, and then we'll uh, cruise around the Greek Isles and then go over to Israel. And we'll go to two ports in Israel. And... Um, we are in communication with Sia Hurst of Six Dimensions, and she does, um, she made plant-based meals for my Greece group last summer, my plant-based group uh, for the Greek Isles. And when we flew into Athens, she met us at the airport and she had given us a menu and we'd chosen uh, before the before we arrived at the airport. So we were greeted at the airport with these bags of just amazing food. And uh, we were able to take it straight to our hotel and then just tour at our leisure and not worry about meals at all. Oh, that's fantastic. It was great. That was great. And is Sia coming to Galapagos with us? Right? Sia is coming to Galapagos with us. Yes, as are Tammy and Tom Kramer. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so that's Galapagos. And then what's after Galapagos? Well, okay. after Galapagos is the Greece. The, the Greece October and 20th. Israel. Yes. Right. Yes. And then we have um, February 24th of 2024 to March 2nd of 2024. We have on the uh, one of the sailing yachts, the smaller sailing ships with Windstar, the Panama Canal in Costa Rica. And that our group is only 20 people because we haven't taken a plant based group on that ship yet. Well, I've, I've taken four people, but we haven't taken a group of a bunch of us. And so they want to make sure they have the logistics perfect before we consider having larger groups. So when you say that's going to be a smaller um, sailing ship, how much smaller is it going to be in comparison to what we were on in Alaska? Half the size. Half the size. Oh, okay. Wow. Mm -hmm. But it's lovely. It's very stable and they put the sails up and they have a keel. Uh, so it's, it's a very stable boat. So it's not going to yeah. have that motion in the ocean? <laughs> no, I don't ever remember it healing when the sails were up. It was uh, just very gentle. Okay. So I wanted to show your, um, what, what, what you they did show? special for you. Oh, well, I just, I just want to talk one more thing about travel. Um, 
both of you are very experienced travelers and you really don't deviate from the way that you eat. A lot of times people are really worried about traveling and maintaining this lifestyle. So what are some tips and tricks that you guys do or some pointers that you guys can give to our audience as to how to make this, um, how to make traveling a lot easier, no matter where they go. So if I'll, I'll start if that's okay, Lisa. Yes. So I was, you know, this trip, we didn't have to worry about the cruise, but I went three or four days ahead to Vancouver. And because I was traveling by myself, I really didn't want to worry about restaurants. I wanted to prepare and take stuff. And I, I went on a land tour four, five days after. So I really had to plan on stuff to last me from August 16th to September 3rd. And I'm going to see if I can just turn my desk, my computer. So this is just, I took actually an extra small duffel bag and I put in boxes of beans. I took a few pre-cooked potatoes. I took a couple of things of rice that I could just microwave. Um, I took maybe eight different varieties of leaf side. One of them fits in this bowl. And then even on a plane, all I have to do is ask for hot water. It cooks in there. I take my bamboo utensils. I have my water bottle. I take some nuts or make my own granola bag if I need a little more calorie density. Um, I took doctor's daughter's oatmeal that I could mix with water and just have that overnight in my hotel room. I took G-bombs from Joel Furman and well bean bars. So I had those always in my purse. I took some of my own cookies that you got to taste, Shayna. Oh my God, it was so they were good. Yummy. Lisa, yeah. um, tell us a little bit about the leaf side product because some of our viewers may not know about it. Yes, I, I we enjoy them as well. And we okay. have a couple of favorites and you order them. It's a monthly subscription and that's a little bit challenging, I find. Um, but they allow you to pause the subscription. But it's simply, you, uh, we have a collapsible bowl uh, because nice. uh, it, it travels so well. And so you just put two cups of water or a cup and a half of water in with the leaf side packet and you've got a meal. Oh, that's wonderful. And I also, I also travel with this bag. So I took this into restaurants and when you open the bag, I could share with other people because I knew there'd be a lot of our people that couldn't have extra leaf sides. Oh, that's and, wonderful. But look, in here is all my vinegars. I had six different vinegars. I had salt-free seasonings and everything. Thank goodness. And Wanda saved the day. Wanda saved the hey, day. Hey, Wanda, did you, did, you need, did you see that you needed all that for Denali? Yes. I thought I would, and I needed it more than I ever thought possible. I was so okay. glad I had it. So it came, it really came in handy when you went to Denali. <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. And I, you know, Mark and I travel with that when When I travel with Mark, he's really good about making up salads in collapsible bowls or that, or we even just put them in plastic bags sometimes that, or those, those, um, what are those silicone recycling? Yeah, the silicone. Yeah. 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 I put things in there. And so we, you know, we rarely have to eat any from the airport or anywhere when we're traveling. We always have enough for a couple of days. And then I always scope out a Whole Foods or some similar store in the city where we're at. It will be more challenging for Galapagos because I. Uh, they do not allow a lot of foods in the Galapagos Islands. And in fact, they x-ray the bags. Mm -hmm. So no fresh produce. Yeah, I, I'm sending out a link with a list in a day or two. So right. what will they allow? Like, do they allow anything? I think Bring probably yours? the G-bomb and the well-being bars, I think are two things that are going to be something very handy for people to order before they travel if they think they're going to get hungry at different times. Once we're on the ship, we're going to be all set. Right. So do you but guys have anywhere that this is posted for people that maybe want to try and find the stuff that you guys travel with? Some of the products that you recommend bringing or? Uh, I think probably if Shada posted it, it yeah. would be great. 
Yeah, if, if you send them like, because I know when I travel, I always take my micro cooker with me uh, because I, I, I have to take it. And then I, like you, Wanda, I take my, you know, balsamic vinegars. And then one thing that I travel with all the time is these um, food storage, the, the yeah. one stick bags, because yeah. I can fill these up. And even on the cruise ship, you know, when they brought us so much grapes on our last night, Aaron and I just ended up taking those and putting them in a Ziploc bags and having them on the bus the next day. That's, so, that's great. Yeah, so it's it's really good to travel, but you you just have to plan when when you're when you're traveling. And remember, guys, if you don't plan, you're going to fail. Plan mm -hmm. to fail. Plan. Wait, how does it go? Fail to plan. Plan to fail. Mm -hmm. And that's just the way it is. Because like you, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deviate. So yeah, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, I think it's the other name of the dehydrated foods you have. Well, there's well-being. There's yeah, this is on doctor's daughters it's joe Furman's daughters created wow. these amazing oatmeals that are like this is apple spice and this is peanut butter protein i think they have about six different flavors and if you go to drfurman.com you'll find them on his website is that okay. um did talia uh do that this is really jenna and kara oh okay jenna and kara okay right yeah, because I think that could be helpful for people just traveling. Oh, general. absolutely. Yeah. I think that would, that would, that would Where be. Where they could purchase some of that stuff. Right. Do you want me to show the. Oh, well, Erin. Okay. So one of the highlights for me and Erin, and I can't thank Lisa and Wanda like, enough because we got to celebrate our birthdays on the ship. <laughs> and it was absolutely wonderful. They decorated our rooms. They made us a cake. They made one for me. They made one for Aaron and I got to tell you guys you really made us feel special by doing all that and I I really can't thank you enough for everything that you guys did for us it was just I'll, I'll was remember fun. it forever and it's yeah. Clayton's birthday too yeah Clayton had birthday. a birthday on the ship too yep. <laughs> and he's photobombing my picture yeah. which I think is yeah. <laughs> and, and he's got his eye on your cake too I can tell <laughs> Well, that, that cake was really yeah, the good. the cake was good. There's a close-up of There's it. a close-up of the cake. And then That's we so came good. back to the room, and they had decorated the room with balloons and streamers and a happy birthday sign. And it was really kind of funny because in the middle of the night, one of the balloons popped, and it huh? scared me to death. I'm like, oh, my God, what was that? I thought we had hit an ice or something. <laughs> Jada, that picture right there is a great one. Behind the curtain is the sliding glass door or a window. Yeah, it's a window. Window. Yeah. window. Yeah, yeah and the nighttime. view you have is amazing. Yeah, at yeah. nighttime, they would do our turn down service. So we had a little chocolate on our bed and the window was always closed. Yeah, it was, it was, our room was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Um, do you have any further questions uh, from our audience? Uh, let me check real quick. No, I was gonna put these up. Well, and if anybody wants to book one of our one of our um, remaining staterooms, they can email me directly. And I've posted uh, both of your emails, in fact, for you, Lisa, and for Wanda, because in case if they want to, you know, travel questions, and if they want to register for NHA for the magazine, all of that's posted in the show notes. No, I'm uh, really which one? Shada, you want to show? I haven't given anybody. I sent it to you. The Well, I, I was actually waiting for you because what I wanted to do is, uh, Wanda, uh, please share with us about the upcoming issue of the health science magazine that's coming out soon. So this is still actually draft, but the cover, I think we're, we're set and those articles are in there and we're still working on photos and finalizing articles, but I'm just thrilled with the diversity of articles that we have in the upcoming magazine. So it will go to the printer in about 10 days. And if, if your guest sign up now, they go to healthscience.org. There's a join renew button. They can join for $35 for one year. And this magazine, 40 pages, advertisement free, will be delivered to their home. And then they'll have digital access to over 40 years of content. Although I've created e-cookbooks for the recipes and menus we serve at the conferences and You'll have access to that under the recipe section, and you can just look by feature name. You can look at testimonials, and 
it's like having a library. There's eBooks that our members get that you can't even buy some of them on water fasting. And if you could find them on eBay, they'd be over a hundred dollars and you can get it in an eBook just by being a member at no cost. Where is this picture taken? It's gorgeous here at the cover. It's a stock photo. Oh, okay. Because I'm like, oh, I wonder who that is. But it does look like fall around where you live, doesn't it, Lisa? It looks like fall around where I live. Uh Yeah, Yeah. so it looks like in the Northeast. We're all in the season of fall and it's so hot. And it's so hot here. I mean, it was 103 degrees today. We We should have sent in a photo of us hiking in Alaska. Yes, yeah. 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 that would have been that would have oh, been. I see Dr. Goresh is running our poll in there. So, who do we have Goresh. this time? Uh, Dr. Goresh. Christy Dr. Funk and Goresh. Joel Furman and Dr. Varest from True North. Sure. Meryl, Meryl Fury is, is a, a nurse um, that just her knowledge on childhood nutrition. She and I are going to do a free plant based summit December 3rd to December 6th. And then Jeannie Schumacher. Oh, see, you can tell it's a draft because Jeannie's name is misspelled. That'll be correct. I was just going to text you. <laughs> yeah, right. We've all, I've already had a, a note with my copy editor. They're, they're changing that. But she's going to do one. And that's a great subject. It's one I'm still learning about personal care products and toxins. You know, we, we kind of got the food down, but it's so much more than the food and and that's what I love about health science is the science evolves. We find the, the right experts to share that information. And there's so much to learn. Yeah, there is, it's, a great magazine. it's a great magazine. And if you guys haven't signed up, I highly urge you to do it. And the best part is there is absolutely no advertisement. And that is wonderful. Yeah. And the magazine, our members are the first ones that find out about future travel. So that's a great way to have early notice, especially now that Windstar is asking us to keep our groups smaller. You know, if you really think you're going to want to travel with us, being a member is the best way to to get a stateroom before they're sold out. Absolutely. And I do have two solo travelers looking for roommates. I have one for Greece to Israel and one for Costa Rica to Panama. And so uh, they're looking to find someone that would enjoy traveling, plant-based travel. Perfect. I think we have two questions left before. Uh, So do all cruise ships leave from Florida? Not not the ones that we use. No, we we, uh, branched out and we're, our one leaves from Athens and goes to Israel, one leaves from uh, Costa Rica, and this one left from Vancouver. Uh, we had one leave from San Diego. We had another uh, river cruise. It was a Rhine River cruise. I've been with a small plant-based group in the Caribbean um, that left from St. Martin's. So, uh, and we're hoping to book Iceland for 2024 and also Tahiti for 2025. Okay, hold on right there. What, oh my God, you got my attention on Iceland. Will you, will, will we be there? I'm already saying we. Uh, <laughs> will we be there doing a Northern Lights? I don't know. You can never guarantee that because it's all about the sky. Uh, but we're looking at um, August of 2024. Our August birthday, Karen, we've got to go. Yeah. We've got to go. There you go. That's, that's the next goal, Iceland. And then I think... And, this- and when you were talking about where we're leaving from for the um, Galapagos cruise, we're flying to Ecuador, to Guayaquil, right. but then yeah. there, as a group, we're flying to the Galapagos Islands so that yeah. our sail time sounds like it'll be much more interesting because you're not going to have a lot of sea time, right? Yeah. We'll just be going port to port because we're flying into Galapagos. Yes, and, and well, and there are 13 islands and they're relatively close. Um, and, and we'll be doing a lot of water activities or if people prefer dry. There's a glass bottom boat available. Um, and then there's hiking and uh, exploring all with naturalists. Right. Um, so this popped up after, so how are you supposed to get there? So I think you guys just take a plane to wherever the departure is from. 
correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and then um, I think they saw the picture of the state room, which is the room we were staying in. For your, your Absolutely. Birthday um, so they asked, is the state room the one with the sitting area? So all of the rooms, if I'm I am remembering so. correctly, are called state rooms. Right. Correct. Or cabins. It's an interchangeable uh, uh, description of the, the room on that you have on the ship. Um, but uh, the wind stars are more of the suite type that have the bed, but then they also have the chair and sofa. Yeah, because Shada and I were in the the small or the lower level room. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you but, call it. But it was huge. But it, yeah. Right. Our, it's still our, called a suite. Still, it's an yeah. all suite yeah. ship. Yeah. So ours was, well, we had a lot of room. I was actually really surprised. Because I think typically on cruise ships, they're pretty, the, you, the ships, the rooms are pretty tiny. Oh, right. yeah. But they, I've never been on another cruise. Yeah, they are. So I, I, can, I can tell you that this was by far the roomiest, the biggest room. Yeah, it was just like yeah. a hotel room. It was big. It was nice. My first cruise ship a long, long time ago, we had bunk beds. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, I remember that in uh, Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. And also, these ships do have larger rooms. There's not a lot yeah. of them. Right? That's, that's, but that's there is perfect. some people that want the, the owner suite or... Yes, they, they're called the premium cabins and they're lovely. They're really spacious. You should see those guys. They have a whole <laughs> full dining room. It's really quite lovely. Well, that was, Lisa, I want to thank you for um, the room that you put Aaron and I in because we didn't feel the motion of the boat rocking as much as we did when we were up higher. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Very yeah, well. I didn't have to take anything. Yeah, and Wanda, thank you for recommending the, or I don't know if it was Wanda or Lisa, that they, you each recommended the herbal patch. Right. And that really helped. That really, yeah. really helped because I was worried about it. So if, if you ladies could please give one more time your, your website and how people can contact you, Lisa, for uh, the travel and for NHA, I think that would be great. Excellent. Okay, so um, the website is the NHA website, National Health Association, healthscience.org, or you can email me directly, lisa.mccarl, M-C-C-A-R-L, at gmail.com. And I can answer questions and provide additional information about the cruises. And you can also email me at W Huberman, H-U-B-E-R-M-A-N, at healthscience.org. Wonderful. Well, I can't thank you ladies enough for tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you for everything that you're doing for all of us. And it's just been an absolute pleasure traveling with you. And more importantly, I just love our friendship. And again, I, I really can't thank you enough for everything that you guys are doing. Thank you. Can't wait to have you travel with us again, Shada. Yeah. Iceland. We are going to Iceland, <laughs> definitely. We are going to Iceland. That would be um, great. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, we'll see you soon, and we'll probably have another uh, Zoom Live coming up in a few weeks. So have a wonderful night. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, you Shada. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.